everybody, it's Tyler here at Bexville, checking with a local team to me that's doing absolutely phenomenal on the field. 408-2B Freedom Gladiators. You gotta check out this robot that they're bringing here. This team only started in February this year, and they're absolutely dominating their division as well, too. Currently ranked number third as we're recording this so far, so congratulations on the great run they have. But you gotta look at low six inch robot we'll go through. We're gonna be talking about a lot of the design philosophy, especially only building with a uh, couple months uh, that run your season through on this. So as we go through this, we'll be talking about, of course, how their intake works. Some of these cool pneumatic systems that they're running as well too, I really want to dive into. Uh, sleds, uh, passive A-tier climb, and more. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Sarah, I gotta ask you starting out here, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that your team only started in February this year and to have you know, such an awesome machine to start so late. Talk to me more about just that experience so far. Sure. Uh, we decided to start late because the past two seasons we really pushed really hard and we put a lot of time into it. So we ended up just really burnt out and we decided to take some time for ourselves. We're also, uh, I'm a junior and he's a senior. Sure. So we kind of got busy with school. Um, and so we just wanted to kind of take time for that. But that definitely influenced our design a lot because we were definitely limited on time. Um, so we definitely went with something more simple and we just, we didn't want to overdo it. We didn't want to do anything that we didn't have to do. Keep it simple and effective. And this is, you know, coming to the world, this is a full rebuild essentially they had, yes. right, from uh, States. Talk to me just a little about uh, some of those big changes and then we'll dive a little bit more closer into your robot. Sure. One of the biggest changes that we made was on the intake. Uh, we previously had like uh, two pistons and a bar that sort of grabbed it and just held it there. Um, and we changed the design of the intake just because uh, we were struggling with some of the functionality limitations of that previous design. Um, so the new intake we figured would uh, just be a little more effective. And your team was doing really good at skills uh, as well too. So sure. I'm mean, gonna assume you had some sort of catapult mechanism that you're not running here at Worlds? Yes, uh, we had a screw on puncher that sat right here on the top. Um, which, yeah, we, we aren't planning on doing skills here, so. And we were talking earlier, you're running a 600 RPM drive. Can we take a look at uh, the underneath of that and uh, yeah, kind of walk through uh, the configuration? Yeah, so we are running 2.75-inch uh, Omni wheels uh, with these uh, flex wheels in the middle to help us get over the bar. We've got six 11-watt motors and two 5.5-watt motors on here. Um, and... Uh, so these, the flex wheels really get over the bar. Uh, we got, we have these uh, boated edges on there to help us get over the barrier. So we have no issues getting over the barrier at all, um, even with them being small wheels. And then the fast drive train really just makes it so that we are super agile and we can get around the field really fast um, and really utilize our being under six inches to de-score at any chance that we get and get over there nice and quick before they are in double zoning anymore. And talking about your uh, wing uh, configuration, if we can deploy those out, see what those look like. Sure. So we've got um, just small wings, I guess, compared to a lot of other teams that you'll see. Um, they aren't a huge part of our strategy because uh, we primarily just utilize our intake to move balls around. It lets us just get, um, constantly have control over the tri ball that we're holding. Um, there's one piston each, nice and small. Um, we use them a lot for the... Uh, for our autonomous win point, uh, we climb up over the center barrier. We'll climb up over the center barrier and uh, just hit the pole with it, and it works every time. They're super reliable. For these wings, are uh, you doing any sort of like alley bowling strategy that incorporate these wings at all? Oh, uh, we do them uh, on the occasion, but like I said, we tend to stick to just possessing one at a time, sure. right in our intake, so that um, we really always have that like constant possession, and we don't make sure that we lose that try ball, and then we risk. Um, having that go against us. So, Well, Eric, let's talk more about that intake uh, as well, too. So walk me through uh, what you're running with. The one thing I got to ask you, too, is I know it's no trap door uh, for your intake as well. So I'd love to hear about your design and, and why it's been working out so well because you've had great success. 
Yeah, so so we've moved on from state from our state robot. We moved from the piston intake to an actual motorized intake. We have two 5.5 watt motors on each side, and um, that just helps with redundancy because if a motor goes down or a chain on each side on one of the sides breaks, that gives us the redundancy that it'll still keep working. And we got the flex wheels, 1.625 inch flex wheels on the front, the softest durometer, and and that just this, it's worked really well for us in taking the balls and. Like you said, we don't have a trap door. We're not able to match load the balls straight in through the top of the intake. But the design reason with that is because when um, having that hole in the top of the robot sometimes allows when you intake a ball, the ball can bounce up out of there. And and if, if you can't contain that ball, sometimes you'll lose it going over the barrier. And, and if you lose it, you might give points to the other team. And our intake is, like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's pretty similar to many of the other intakes that we see here at Worlds. But the biggest difference is our intake and our hang are integrated into the same mechanism. We have the hang bar, the intake goes all the way up and these, these little hooks go up and and it's a passive A tier hang that allows us to, to really quickly and efficiently hang onto the bar. And this was a big design choice that we decided to make to have the intake be part of the hang because it just reduces the complexity of the robot. When we can combine all the mechanisms into one simpler mechanism, it just overall makes the robot lighter and easier to work with. So, but we have to do some fancy work with the pneumatics to get this to work, because if we go all the way down to the six inch height, we need to be able to lift it up just a little bit to intake, and then we also have to be able to lift it all the way up to, to hang. So we do that with, with these two pistons here and this linkage, that allows the um, the intake to lift up to that six inch height, but still move beyond. We can see those those points there contact with the frame, and then we have four pistons hooked up to the main the main frame of the intake, and that allows it with the four pistons it allows us to lift it with really low pressure, and then we lift up, and then like I said earlier, we just back onto the bar. It's a simple passive A tier. It works every time. We can get it after the match runs out. If the time cuts out and we have momentum going towards the bar, we still can get that elevation, which it's it's been very beneficial to us because a lot of other teams with their B-tier hangs or even their H-tier hangs, it takes them 10 seconds maybe to, to get up there. And with that time, we can score two more try balls and then get the A-tier hang, which still scores us quite a few points. Well, and I think it actually makes you like a really great alliance partner as well to that route, because so many teams are going with that H-tier hang as well mm -hmm. too, that you, you don't really need two necessarily, right? right? So like to have that versatility that your robot brings, I think makes a lot of sense on that. Uh, mm -hmm. As we wrap up in here, anything else uh, from sensors or programming or anything like that that you want to cover on this robot? I know overall, you've had a very simple design, and simple is great, I think, in this standpoint, but I just want to see if there's anything you want to mention. So I guess overall, the only sensors we use are the inertial sensor, which is just center underneath the robot, um, it's hiding out down there, and then the internal motor encoders. And we use the inertial sensor for all the turns, the internal motor encoders for the driving. Um, we use Easy Template for all of our programming. It's been really like good for us. We haven't had any issues. We've gotten our part of the win point for every match. Nice. No issues. And yeah, it's it's simple has been working really good for us. Yeah, you all doing what you need to do, and I think that's what's the important part here. So Freedom Gladiators, thank you so much for telling us more about your team and your robot. Congratulations, by the way, on all your success so far. We can't wait to see how you do as well, too, in the Opportunity Division, and wish you best of luck here at Bexwells. Good luck. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.